Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, we are continuing working on the Spectre Window Manager. In this specific video, we are going to configure the status bar. We are going to have a look a little bit more in depth on the configuration file. And in the end, we are also going to install a nice lock screen. So let's get going. So we are here on the Spectre Window Manager. I'm assuming that you followed already the previous video, which was the basic installation for this window manager. And let's open up here one terminal with our shortcut, which is meta or mod shift enter. And we have our terminal here. So in this tutorial, what we are going to do is to explore a little bit more the configuration file. We are going to create a script for our status bar and we're going to modify that as well. And in the end, we are going to also install another lock screen to replace the standard one. Now, before we get started here, let me point out one thing, and that is one website, which has one of the best informations available for Spectre WM. So let me go to the second workspace and pull up Chromium here. And let's search for Spectre WM manual, and hit enter. So let me put this into English. And you want to go here to the first link. This is the mancare.com website and just click this link. And this is a very nice website because it explains everything in detail about SPECT WM. So what we can do here, we can click, for example, on configuration files. And it's going to tell us where the configuration files are and so on. But most importantly, down here, we are giving an explanation of all of the functions of the configuration file, including also the bar function. So I will keep this open because I'm going to come back here later and show you what I'm doing in the script. So let's go back to the first workspace here with mod1. And let's open up our configuration file by typing in vim and then dot spectre wm.conf and hit enter. So here is the file we worked on in the last tutorial. And let me go back on the top here with control B. And let's have a look here at some of the functions. So we have here the workspace limit. These options are all commented out. That means at this point they are not actually active. And I'm not going to activate them, but I'm just going to go through here on what they do very quickly. So we have the workspace limit here. And then we have these options here for focus mode, focus close, and so on. Now let's go back shortly to Chromium. And you can see here we have these options already here to us. And it explains us here exactly what they do. So for example, focus mode here, window focus behavior with respect to their pointer, possible values, default, set the window focus on border crossing caused by cursor motion and window interaction, follow and manual. So you can set this the way you want to, and then you can uncomment the option to make it active. Now, I can't possibly go through all the options here one by one, but this website here explains you in detail every single option and what it does. So in the end, it's up to you to decide whether you want to activate then the options or not. In my case, because I want to go as light as possible, I'm activating only a few of those, but feel free, of course, to customize this and to activate the options you want to use. Now, down to window decoration here, we already disabled the border width, which means have no border around the windows. We can also choose the color for the border when it's active. By default, it's red and the option is deactivated. So that means if the border width would have been one, that means it would have been active. The border would be red. You can also change the color of the focus maximized windows and also the color for the unfocused window and also the color for the unfocused maximized windows. So these are really up to you. And if you go back to Chromium to the website we saw before, it's going to explain you there exactly which kind of values you can enter and which values are supported. Now the region padding here, it's basically the gaps we see around the windows and the same goes also for the title gap. Now, the next region I want to actually explore is the bar settings. So one thing to keep in mind about the status bar here in Spect WM, it's that it has a limited set of characters that can be displayed. So if that's too limited for you, you can always disable the bar here and install, for example, another bar like polybar. That's always possible. But in this case here, I'm going to keep this bar and just going to configure it with the basic settings so that you can see how it works. 
Now we have also here the border width for the bar. We have also the bar border for the first display. The number in the brackets here is the number of the display. I have only one in my case, but if you have multiple, you can configure that as well. The same goes also for these colors. We have also the font color for the first display. I'm going to let this standard anyway. And again, in the manual I showed you before, you can see also the other values that you can use here. And we have also the bar font for the selected window. In my case, it's black because I am on this screen and this is the selected screen. Now for the font here right now, I'm going to use the Terminus font because it was already installed in my case and it looks fine for me, but you can also install other fonts here. Just keep in mind that depending on the font, not every font is going to look great in this bar. Now, the next option I want to have a look at is the action. So the action option here basically will tell SpectWM to run such a called bar action script into the status bar. Now, we don't have that script yet, but the installation actually provides one to us. We just have to find it out and put it in a location where we can execute it. So let's first anyway uncheck this option here by deleting the hashtag. And I will just save the file for now and exit BIM. Now, the example for the status bar, it's in our user share docs directory. So we can navigate there. Let's type in CD and then slash user slash share slash doc slash spec WM and hit enter. And let's type in LS to list the content of this directory. Now we have an examples directory there, so we can go in there. Let's type in CD and then examples and hit enter. Type in again LS. And here you can see we have a bar action script already available to us. So what we want to do here, we want to copy this file, for example, into a script directory in our home directory. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to my home directory and type in mkdir and then script and hit enter. And now I'm going to copy this file into this script directory. So I'm going to type in cp and then slash user slash share slash doc, slash spectr, wm, slash examples, and then bar action dot sh. And you are going to copy this into the scripts directory, and the name is going to be the same. So we can just hit enter. Now let's go into our scripts directory. So let's type in cd and then scripts and hit enter, type in ls. And here we have our bar action script. So we need to make executable this script. So let's type in chmod plus x and then bar action dot sh and hit enter. Now we need to go back to the configuration file because we need to specify where the script is. So let's type in vim and then dot spect wm.conf and hit enter. And we go here to the bar action and specify our directory, which is in my case scripts slash bar action. And then we can save the file and exit vim. And then we can restart our window manager by hitting mod q and our script now is up and running. Now, what's in actually this script? Let's have a look at that. Let's go in there and type in vim, then scripts, and then bar action .sh and hit enter. So this is a script basically that provides us with a date. It provides us also with information about the memory. It provides us also information with the CPU for the user percentage, the nice levels, the system levels, and the idle. And it provides us also information for the CPU speed. Now, if you have a laptop, you will see also a battery indicator there. In my case, it's not present because I don't have a laptop. This is a VM. And in the end here, it's going to basically show what it's going to print out here in the status bar. Now, there are some things missing here, and I want to actually have also my volume here. And we need to configure this, of course, in the window manager first. So let's leave this for now as it is. We will modify this a little bit later. So let's quit this file and clean up the terminal. Now let's go back to our configuration file for the spect wm window manager. So let's type in vim.spectwm.conf and hit enter. And what I want to do right now before I explore other options for the status bar, which we are going to configure later, is to actually enable here my audio system. So let's open up here a new terminal and let's type in sudo pacman-s, because we need to install the packages for that. The first package I want to install is alsa-utils. And I'm going to install also Pulse Audio. And if you have a laptop, I definitely recommend you to install also ACPI. 
And the last package actually I would recommend you to install is sysstat because it's going to be used by the bar action script for the information about the system and also the CPU. And then we can hit enter, enter our sudo password and proceed with installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. Now we can close up this window and let's actually restart once the window manager by hitting mod Q. And now we have already also the system levels here are showing correctly in our status bar. Now let's continue and configure Spectra VM for our volume. So I'm going to go down here somewhere where I have a little bit space. Let's say we do it here before the key binding. So I'm just going to enter here a new line and I'm going to put the comment here, volume control. And go down to the next line and enter our lines. Now, don't worry about all these. I will leave a link to all of these in the video description below. But to show you how it works, basically, we can define first the program that we want to run. So let's type in program. And then we open the squarely bracket to define the program. The program I want to use first here is actually to raise the volume. So I'm going to type in here raise underscore volume. Then close the square bracket. And this is going to equal to the action that we want to tell the system to do, which in my case is a mixer set master and then 5% and then plus. So we want to increase the volume by 5%. Now in the next line, we're going to say program square brackets. This time we're going to lower the volume. So let's type in lower underscore volume square bracket. And then this one is equal to a mixer set master 5%, but this time is minus. So we're going to decrease the volume by 5%. And we will type in here program square bracket mute underscore volume closing the square bracket. And this is going to be equal to a mixer set master toggle. Now we are basically using the volume switch here to turn off our volume. Now we define the functions. Now we need to define also the key bindings. So let's go down here and let's define the key bindings for our window manager so that the multimedia keys will work with these programs. So the first one is the raise volume. So let's type in bind square bracket raise underscore volume closing the square bracket. And this action is going to be used by our multimedia key for raising the volume, which in our case is XF86 audio raise volume. Now you can see probably what happens with the next one. So let's go down and type in bind square bracket lower underscore volume, close the square bracket. And this is going to be equal to XF86 audio lower volume and we can go down to the last line here and we can type in bind square bracket mute underscore volume close the square bracket and this is going to be equal to xf86 audio mute so now the keys are defined so we can save the file and exit vim and for these changes to take effect, we need to actually reboot our machine. Otherwise, the audio server will not be working. So I will type in reboot and hit enter. It's going to take a second here to reboot the machine. There you go. So let's start Arch Linux. It's going to take a second to boot up. There you go. So I enter my username, the password, and start X. And we are back in our window manager here and we can see now our options that are working. So let's try actually to open up a terminal and I'll try to press now my volume keys and you can see there is a reaction here on the terminal. So the volume keys are working. We just don't see the level because we don't have it configured in the bar, but we're going to do this in a second. So no worries there. Now let's open up again our configuration file. So let's type in vim.spectrogram.conf and hit enter. Now, here we did the last time copy the key bindings for our window manager. This is fairly self-explanatory because it tells you what the key binding does. You can actually change this if you're not comfortable with this. So, for example, if you want to change the bar toggle, you can change instead of mod B with another letter if you're more comfortable with that. 
focus next, focus in on the next window. You can change this if you don't like it. These are fairly simple, but they are very intuitive and you're probably not going to change them unless you require a specific key binding. For example, probably some of you might want to change this mod shift return for starting the terminal. Some people like to have just mod return. So it's up to you really to decide. Here we have the key bindings to go to the workspaces, which we saw already. So mod one goes to the first workspace and so on. So these are fairly simple. We have also here on top the quirks. So the quirks are basically like rules. So in this case here, they're all deactivated because I'm not using these anyway, but you can define them yourself. For example, you can say you want to have M player starting up with these options. You just need to uncomment this line here and this option will be available for M player when it's installed. The same goes also for open office. So you can activate this option and open office will be always floating and so on. Now we have here also something else which is very similar and that is actually defining a key binding for a specific program. So if you want to define starting your browser with a shortcut, you can do that as well. For example, in this case, we have Firefox here. So we are binding Firefox to start with mod shift B. Now I have the Chromium browser so I can replace this. And also I can say here on top program Firefox in this case. So that means when I run this program, you're going to open up Firefox with this website. So this is just an example, but it's very simple and you can configure many programs starting up like this. And we looked through already the other options here. Here we have the options to change the mod key if you don't want to use the Windows key, which is mod 4. And as you can see here, if you have an Apple keyboard on OS 10, it's actually mod 2. So you can change this as well. Now, here we can set also the name for our workspaces. And I'm going to do this very quickly just for one or two of these. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change first the name of the first workspace. And I'm going to call this terminal because this is normally where I work on the terminal. And on the second one here, I'm going to call this browser. Now I could change also the third one and the fourth one as well, but I'm just making an example here and I'm just going to use this too. Now I need to actually activate these options here by deleting the hashtag. So I'll do this for both. And now we can save the file. And we can restart our window manager, but you will see that this name is not appearing anyway. And that's because our bar is not yet configured for that. But we'll do this in a second. We have here some customization options for the layout when we start. So that means here, for example, we have the layout for the first workspace. It's going to be set up this way with the vertical option. And again, I refer you to the manual we saw before in Chromium to explore actually what this option is doing and if you need it. And here we can also define applications that will launch in a workspace of choice. So in this case, you can say, for example, if you want to activate this, it's going to auto run always the terminal in the first workspace. Now, in my case, I have Terminator and not Xterm, so I would need to change the name here and activate this option. But then if I do this, then every time I open up a terminal, it will be open in the first workspace. The same goes for other programs. This, for example, Sombrero will open up with this website in the workspace number two. So you can configure your shortcuts here by using basically these commands and repeating these options. Now, let's go back to our bar and let's configure something else here. So you can see here we have the bar format and let me go back to Chromium here. I go back to workspace number two and I need to open that up again because it was closed when I rebooted the machine. And I'll search again for spec WM manual here and go to the first link and go to configuration files. Now let's scroll down here until we find the bar. And you can see here, as I said before, we can define here the border focus, the border width for the bar, etc. Every option here is explained in detail. And let's go down here because I'm looking for the bar format. So the bar format is what's going to be displayed here on top and it's how it's going to be displayed here on top. Now, I don't like actually to have everything here on the left side and there is actually a justify option in our configuration file, but you can configure the bar only on the left, on the center or on the right. So everything basically it's moving all together. So instead of having everything on the left, we could have everything in the middle or everything on the right, but that's not the idea solution for me, I would like to have actually some information on the left, like it happens also in some other bars. This is, of course, a matter of personal preference. And if you prefer to have it in the middle, all of it, you can just do that. That's not a problem. But I want to show you how you can actually set it up because we have these options right here in front of us. So first, actually, 
I want to make sure that I can see the volume here because right now I cannot actually have any indication on how much my volume is. So what we need to do, we need to go back to the terminal in the first workspace and we exit this file and we need to open our bar action script. So let's type in vim, then scripts and then bar action.sh and hit enter. So we need to enter a volume function here. Now, I'm not gonna go too much here in scripting because this is not the focus of this tutorial. And I will leave, of course, a link to this file in the video description so that you can just copy it if you don't want to type it in yourself. But I need to define here somewhere the volume function. It doesn't actually really matter where you define it. What matters is then it's where it's going to be displayed at the end. And so we are not worrying here where we are doing this function. And I'm going to put the volume script here just after the CPU speed. It doesn't really matter, but just it's comfortable to have it here for me. So enter insert mode here, insert a couple of lines. And so here I'm going to enter the vol, closing parenthesis, and then the squarely bracket to open up the function. Now, I'm not going to go in detail here about the function itself. So I'm just going to type it in and I'll be back with you in a second. So here is the function, so don't worry, again, I will put a link to this in the video description below. So what we need to do now, we need to scroll down at the end of the file and enter our function here where it says echo. So let's type in here, dollar sign, opening parenthesis, volume, closing parenthesis. Then we can save the file and exit vim. Now we can restart our window manager with mod Q. And you can see that we have our volume 89% at the end of the line. I try to push now my multimedia keys here. And you can see the volume is increasing and decreasing accordingly. So everything is working fine. Now let's configure our bar a little bit more. So let's open up again the configuration file for the window manager. So let's type in vim and then dot spectrwm.conf and hit enter. Now again, let's go up here to the bar format. So first of all, we need to uncomment this line so that it's active. So let's delete the hashtag here. And let's have a look here at what we want to do. So let's go back to the second workspace. And let's see the options here. So for example, you can see here the L is the workspace list indicator. We have also other options like N, the screen number. We have also other options here like the workspace index and so on. And for example, let's look at this option. This is the one actually I want to start with. So the plus at the pipe symbol here is making the start of a new bar section. And justify can have the value left, center, right, and so on. So what I want to do here, I want to have one part of the bar on the left and one part of the bar on the right. So let's go back to the terminal. And let's do that. So I'm going to type in here plus and then the pipe symbol. And I'm going to say left. And the weight is by default one. So let's enter that. So let's type in, in here plus one. And then let's insert here a small space or a padding into our status bar by hitting the minor than symbol. And then we're going to type in plus n. Now the n, if we go back here, the n defines basically the screen number. So I have only one screen, so I could actually leave this off. But if you have multiple screens, maybe it's useful to you. So the n here is the one that we see on the top. This is the monitor number one. I have only one, so that's the one I have. And this is the number of the workspace. So we are saying basically on the left, we want to have our workspace with a monitor name. And then we have the I option. Now let's go back to the manual. The I option defines the workspace index, which is basically this one right here. So we have the monitor name and the workspace name. So let's go back to the terminal one more time. Now, after the I, we have the S option. What is the S option? Well, let's have a look. Let's go back to Chromium. The S option is the stacking algorithm. So it's basically the one that we see here. It's basically telling you whether you are in tiling mode or in another mode. So I'm gonna leave that in. And after the S, we have the D. So basically the D displays the name of the workspace. Right now it is displayed like this, but I'm gonna change this up a little bit instead of the major than and minor than symbol. I'm gonna enter here the square bracket and I'm gonna define also here another closed square bracket. And I'm going to remove this four option here and enter a space. Now the rest here is defining basically the time, the day and so on, but it's not the end. I want to actually here insert also the name of the window. And to do that, we can type in, in here plus capital W, which is defining basically the name of the window we have open. Then after this, I'm gonna type in a plus and again, the pipe symbol, 
to define another space of the status bar. And this time I'm going to go to the right side. Now on the right side, I want to display with a plus the A option. If you go back here to the manual, the A option here basically displays the output of the external script, which is in our case, the bar action.sh script, which is fine for me. So I'll go back there and enter another pipe symbol. And now I want to display the A, which is the name of the day. I want to display here actually the D, which is the number of the day of the month. And then here I'm going to type in the B to define the name of the month. And then I'm going to also enter here the percentage and the Y for the year. Now I'm going to insert again a pipe symbol here to have a separator. And I'm going to remove the space and have the R option there, which is going to display the time. And I will delete these other options here because I don't need them up. So this is the way I configure mine. So now we can basically save the file and exit Vim. And we can restart the window manager with mod Q. And you can see what happens there. We have on the left side here our window name. We have here our status bar on the right side with the script the name of the month, the day of the month, and the time. Now, the thing which is not appearing is the name of the workspace, and that's because we need to actually exit once the window manager. So let's do this by hitting mod shift Q and type in again start X. And as you can see now, the name of the workspace is working fine. So it's terminal, so I can open up the terminal, and there you go. If I move to the second workspace with mod 2, it's going to be in the browser workspace. So this is a simple way on how you can configure the status bar. This is just one way and it's my way, but of course it's really personal. I try to keep this bar as simple as possible and as light as possible because it has a limited number of characters that it can print out. But if you want, you can go ahead also and configure this a little bit more with icons, but I'm not going to do this right now. The last thing I would like to do in this tutorial is to install actually a lock screen or a better lock screen for our window manager. And that's the lock screen called better lock screen, which is available from the Arch user repository. So we can type in, in here yay dash s and then better lock screen. And I'm going to install also a dependency, which I know it's needed later, which is BC. And then we can hit enter. Now we can enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation of BC and also with the installation of the better lock screen. So I'll type in N for none for the differences to show and proceed with the installation. Now this is going to take a moment to download and install, so I'll be back when it's done. So the packages are now installed, so let's clean up the terminal. So we have a few things to do before the lock screen can be available to us. First is to decide actually which picture we want to use for the lock screen. Now we have several choices here. You can of course download other pictures if you want to use it for the lock screen. But in my case, what I'm going to do is actually to use my desktop picture. I'm just going to make a blur out of it so that it seems like the display is blurred. And that's going to be fine for me. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do first is to basically tell better lock screen to cache our image so that it can be used for the lock screen. So to do this, we can type in better lock screen, and then dash u, and then we define the path to the photo. In my case, it's under slash pictures, and the name was japan.jpg, and then I can hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to do that. And this is done. Now we need to define in our configuration file for the window manager to use this lock screen. So let's go back into our configuration file by typing in vim.spectrogram.conf. And let's go down where our programs are. And here are the validated default programs. So right now we have xlock and I'm going to change this. So I'm going to type in here better lock screen dash L to tell that we want to lock the screen. And the effect I'm going to use is dim blur, which is going to dim the screen and blur the photo. Now we can save the file and exit Vim. Now for the changes to take effect, even we reload the window manager, it's not going to work. We need to exit once by hitting mod shift Q and type in again start X and hit enter. And now if we hit the combination for the lock screen, which is mod shift delete, it's going to basically take the photo, blur it, dim it and show our clock. Now I can enter my password and I'm back into my window manager. So this is going to do it for configuring the SPECT window manager. We went through the configuration file. We went through on how to customize the status bar. 
And I encourage you to explore the manual that I showed you before on the Chromium browser. And of course, I will leave a link to this in the video description below. Because if you want to explore more about the settings available in the Window Manager, and especially in the status bar, it's a great resource to explore. Now, this is just a basic configuration, of course, but I think you have enough material now to know what you can do and how you can configure it yourself the way you want to. So far, I like SpecWM. It's very light and it's very fast. I'm going to keep using this now for a while just to test it out and have a better impression. And as I said before, I will leave a link to all of this, what you've seen in this tutorial in the video description below. So there you go. This is the basic configuration for the Spectre WM Window Manager. So this was a basic customization of the status bar with the scripts we have already available. I just added the volume script in there and then also displayed the volume by adding also the commands in the configuration file. However, if you are not happy with this bar or it's too limited for you, you can always also disable it and install the polybar if you prefer to do so. Anyway, so far I like the Spect Window Manager. It's very light and it's very fast and I will use it still for a while and see how it ages. I hope you liked the video guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.